those of you that are live, watching live, just give us a musical note emoji. We'll know what that means. Amen. Um, family, I want you quickly um, to grab your Bibles. We're going to go um, straight to our Bibles. A little bit different translation today, but I want you to go to Mark chapter 15, verse 24. Mark chapter 15. 15 verse 24. Dante, if you can grab that light behind, right behind you, I appreciate it. And, uh, this translation, family, is um, a new translation that I found, but it, it just fit perfectly in the wording. It's called the Passion Translation. So if you got your electronic devices, it's the TPT, the Passion Translation. And I got one scripture for you, and it reads just like this from Mark 15 verse 24, the Passion Translation. It says they nailed his hands and feet to the cross. Thank God for the reading of the word, the word of God, for the people of God. You may have your seats. Those of you that are watching live with us, want to ask you to do me a huge favor that you will make sure, if you haven't already, to tag five people and make sure you share this broadcast. We want to make sure that the gospel message is out there. And for those of you that are hanging out with us in the house, um, and we are six foot apart, and I want to make sure that y'all push a little bit today. Family, um, as unorthodox as this Resurrection Sunday is, I still have to be honest with you, I still feel the power and the presence of God. Um, I still feel the power and the presence of God. God. The Passion Translation in Mark chapter 15 verse 24 is quite interesting because it says, and they nailed his hands and his feet to the cross. And family, for a few moments today, I really wrestled with what we will talk about today because it's, it's tradition to, if I was Baptist, we would, we would take him down on Friday, let him rest a little on Saturday and raise him early Sunday morning. But Dante, I don't, I don't got lungs like that, and I can't squeal like that, so I have to, I have to go in the direction that God leads me. And family, um, this verse intrigued me so much that I wanted to speak to you from this subject today, a conversation with the cross, a conversation with the cross. Family, although in today's time the cross is the universal symbol of our Christian faith. It has not always been that way. In fact, um, when you go through history, you'll find that the first original formated cross was formulated in 300 BCE by the Persians. It was then 100 years after that um, that the cross, the idea of the cross, was then adopted from the Persians by the Romans and used as the primary tool for criminal execution. So when you think about the early Christian believers, the early believers in Christ, they refused to accept the cross as the symbol of their faith because in their eyes, the cross was the symbol of shameful death. And that helps bring to life and explains the sentiments of Dr. James Cone, the father of black theology, who highlights in his book, The Cross and the Lynching Tree, that the cross was a self-contradicting symbol that inverts the world's value system them by declaring that hope comes by way of defeat and that suffering and death does not have the last word. To make that simple in simple terms, all Dr. Cohn was saying, family, is that the cross, to a world logical thinker, the cross is contradicting. Here's why he says that the cross to a world logical thinker is contradicting because to the world, defeat means no victory, but to the cross, defeat means hope. To the world, death means the end of a thing, but to the cross, death means the beginning. To the world, the last will always be the last, and the first will always be the first. But to the cross, the first will be last, and the last shall be first. So family, when we think of the cross, for many centuries, the cross has represented the symbol of shameful death and was the primary tool for criminal execution. 
And when we look a little bit deeper and intentionally into the cross, we find what's known as the golden legend. The golden legend is one of the most popular religious works next to the Bible that comes from the Middle Ages. And when we look at the golden legend, it brings insight not only to the cross, but it brings insight to the cross of Jesus. So according to the golden legend, the queen of Sheba, when she was going to visit Solomon, which is highlighted and which is recorded in the book of Ecclesiastes in our Bible, when the queen of Sheba was on her way to go and visit Solomon, she crossed a bridge, a wooden bridge that had been carved and made from wood from the tree of mercy and the tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden. So she crosses this bridge that has been carved out with wood from the tree of mercy and the tree of knowledge, and she becomes so enamored with the wood that she collects some of its timber to take it and offer it as a gift to Solomon. Solomon receives the gift of timber, but uncertain about the wood, what Solomon decides to do, family, is he decides to preserve the wood, so he buries the wood. And according to the golden legend, 14 generations later, someone discovers this particular wood, takes the wood, and forms and builds the cross that Jesus would be crucified on. Okay, let me help y'all real quick. Um, this is interesting because the wood on the bridge that Queen of Sheba finds and is enamored with is the same wood that's carved from the tree of mercy and the tree of knowledge in the garden. She's enamored with it. She offers it to Solomon when she visits as a gift. Solomon is unsure about the wood, so to preserve it, he buries it. Fourteen generations later, the wood is founded and is built to make the cross that Jesus would be crucified on. That point not only interests me, Dante, but that thing inspired me because it helped me to understand that the same wood that was carved from the tree of knowledge that brought damnation to the world is the same wood that was used to build the cross of Jesus that would now offer salvation to the world. And some of you just missed it even in TV land or virtual land. Some of you missed it in the room because that's the moment right there where we should pause and reflect back over our own lives because the simple fact is there's some stuff in your life that was designed to take you out, but it's now either working for your favor or will work out in your favor. In fact, the Bible says it like this. They intended it to harm you, but God intended it for your good. And is there anybody that's watching live or in this room right now that are testified to the fact that there was some stuff that was designed to destroy you, that was supposed to kill your reputation, that was supposed to slander your name? There was some stuff that should have took you out. There was some heartbreaks that was designed to make you lose your mind. But the same thing that was designed to kill you is now getting ready to give you life and maybe y'all can't shout over that but that thing makes me go off because I think about all the stuff and all the people that the enemy sent along my way to try to destroy me kill me knock me off my track but the same thing that they said about you God is getting ready to turn it around and let it work for you the same thing that people try to use to destroy you is going to be the same thing that motivates you to get up out of the bed every morning and go harder today than you did the day before because here's the reality family what God does can't no man stop and Paul said it like this everything works together for the good of those that love the Lord that are called according to his purpose and is there anybody that can celebrate and give God your best praise today because the thing that was designed to kill you is the same thing that's going to give you life Yeah, it's interesting because I'm the same wood that brought damnation to the world is the same wood used to build the cross to bring salvation to the world and family. When we look at this cross, it's interesting because according to the gospel writer Mark, the cross never comes in the presence of Jesus until Mark chapter 15, verse 21. Um, You notice that the Passover has already happened. Jesus has already had communion with his disciples. He's already prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane and asked, God, can this cup pass me by? He's already been betrayed by Judas. He's been arrested. He's already been brought before the Sanhedrin Council and transferred over to Pilate. He's already been talked about by the crowd and sold out by the crowd and the Roman soldiers. He's been stripped of all of his clothes. He's had a sign placed above him to mock him because he said he was the king of the Jews. And through all of this, the cross 
Ghost has never came in the presence of Jesus through all that he's experienced on these couple of days, all that he's went through. The cross has yet to come in the presence of Jesus. And that thing messed me up because how can he go through Passover? How can he go through communion? How can he go through being sold out and betrayed? How can he go through being stripped but never have the cross come into his presence? Why does this happen, Cray? It helped me understand this because, listen, follow this, catch this. The reason that the cross had not came in his presence yet is because this particular cross was not designed just for Jesus. It was designed for the next person up. And just so happened, this cross being the next cross up for the next person up, just so happened Jesus was the next person up. Uh, why, why, why is that good to you, Craig? Because some of us need to realize that you are getting ready to come across some stuff that you didn't deserve just because you were the next person up and what you've been asking for was up for the next person. Y'all, y'all, okay. Uh, and, and I can celebrate this because there's some things that I've been asking God for and it seems like it's been jumping over me and other people been getting blessed and other folks been getting blessed. But if you just hold on a little while longer, if you just keep your patience a little while longer, the thing that was intended for you it may have seemed as if it dropped over you or jumped over you but it's coming back around your way why because you're the next person do i got anybody in this place right now or that's watching us live that you believe by faith i'm the next person up and because you're the next person up what god has for you the song said god has for me it is for me the, the cross was not intended for Jesus. The cross just happened to be in a good place at a good time because the cross was the next one up and Jesus just happened to be the next one up. Mark, family Mark, um, tells us that as Jesus um, by the Roman soldiers in the crowd are now dragging Jesus through Jerusalem along with the cross. Early in the morning, Jesus, don't miss it, and the cross is being dragged through Jerusalem. Um, I couldn't wait to put um, my car in park right there for a moment and leave my engine running. Um, but here's the reality, family. Um, it's different when you're being dragged for Jesus and when you're dragging yourself. What, what, okay, don't, don't y'all clap too quick. Uh, don't, don't, don't y'all put your emoji too quick um, because let me run this thing down. See, what, what we facing in our 21st century and in today's time, it used to be that the phrase that everybody used was only God can judge me. Um, come here, Tupac. Yeah, only, only God can judge me. So whenever somebody says something or whenever you got caught up doing your stuff, then your phrase was only God can judge me. Yeah, some of y'all looking at me funny right there. Uh, you, you, you know, when you was deep down in your sin and you didn't want nobody to, to, to make a comment or hold you accountable, you know, you said only God can judge me. But now the phrase is no longer only God can judge me. The phrase is now they talked about Jesus. Okay, y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. follow me right here. Uh, so, so what are you saying, Cray? A lot of people try to use what Jesus experienced to what they're experiencing. But it's a difference when your name is being dragged on behalf of Christ and when you're dragging your own name. How do I drag my own name? Some of the rumors that are going around about some of us, that's not based on Jesus. That's based on you. Okay, yeah, yeah. Some of the stuff that people say and do to you, that's not based on you being persecuted for Jesus. That's based on you and your behaviors. And there's a difference when you're being persecuted for your own stuff and when you're being persecuted for the name of Jesus. But the cross is being drugged through Jerusalem, not by the cross's choice, but because the cross is connected to Jesus. Family, the cross... Mark says, early in the morning, the cross and Jesus are being drugged through Jerusalem. And while they're being drugged through Jerusalem by the Roman soldiers and the crowd, the Roman soldiers and the crowd, I like this translation, they stop an African man named Simon who is visiting Jerusalem on vacation with his two sons from Libya. And they make Simon carry the cross for Jesus the rest of the way to the hill of Golgotha, the place of the skull, or the Baptists say Calvary. And Simon, who's on vacation in Jerusalem from Libya with his two sons, is now responsible, watch this, for carrying the cross on the hill of Golgotha. 
And when he gets there, the Bible says around 9 o'clock in the morning, let me go slow, they nail through his hands and his feet, the verse says, to the what? Cross. They place a sign above his head that says, this is the king of the Jews. And then they crucify him. Family, this series of events, Melody Walker prompted me to want to have this conversation with the cross. Um, it was this series of events that, that had the exchange of the cross from the back of Jesus to the back of Simon up on a hill and now experiencing the crucifixion of Jesus. This what prompted me to want to have a conversation with the cross because I wanted to know to the cross, how did you feel that day? What, 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 did you, what did you think that day, Mr. Cross? Did you ever think that when you were a tree growing up in a garden, that one day you would be responsible for holding the weight of Jesus? I wanted to ask the cross, Mr. Cross, how did you feel? What did you think? What was the difference, Mr. Cross, when Jesus was carrying you versus when Simon was carrying you? I wanted to ask the cross, what did you think? What did you feel? What did you see? I wanted to have a conversation, Nikki Perry, with the cross because I've heard the perspective um, of Jesus. I've heard people tell the perspective of Mary. I've heard people tell the perspective of the disciples and the crowd. I've even heard people tell the perspective of Simon, but I wanted to know the perspective of the thing that was closest to Jesus during his agony. So I wanted to have a conversation with the cross. So I had an isogetical, spiritually imaginative, prayerful conversation with the cross. And the very first thing, family, that the cross said to me, the cross said, Cray, I wasn't born for this, but I was built for it. Yeah. I, I said, M Mr. Cross, what, what, what are you saying? Mr. Cross said, I was born as a tree in the garden. I was born to store carbon dioxide and give oxygen and stabilize the soil. He said, I was born to be a tree, but I was not born to be cut down and have my lifeline stripped from me. He said, I was not born to hang the weight of the world and Jesus on me. He said, I was not born to have nails driven through me. He said, I was not born for it, but the process of it made me built for it. And family, just like the cross, some of you in here, you were not born for some of the stuff that you've experienced in your life, but the process of life may not have let you been born for it, but you were built for it. And is there anybody in here right now that can testify that I was not born for rejection? I was not born for the pain. I was not born for the brokenness. I wasn't born to be hurt, but the process of life taught me that though I wasn't born for it, I sure was built for it. And there's some stuff right now that you're experiencing in your life that you can say I wasn't born for it, but thank God for the process because now you were built for it. Yeah, the, the cross said, Cray, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't born for nails to be driven through me. I wasn't born for my lifeline to be stripped from me. But the process of being made into a cross made me built for it. Mark says in 15 and 24, Mark says, um, watch this, and they nailed Jesus' hands and his feet into the cross. Don't miss this. And though the cross was not born for nails, the cross became built for nails. And that's a testimony to somebody in here. And if it's not, it's for me or somebody that's watching live that I know the nails are painful. I know the nails hurting. I know, Mr. Cross, nobody ever asked you or Miss Cross. Nobody ever asked you about your perspective and your opinion. But the reality is we got crosses sitting in here and we got crosses that are watching us live that life has driven some nails into you and nobody asked you how you feel. Everybody talked to Jesus. Everybody talked to Mary. Everybody talked to the disciples. People talked to Simon. But nobody ever asked you how did you feel? And the cross said, I wasn't born for it, but the process made me built for it. Mr. Cross, Mr. Cross said, the nails were drilled through Jesus' hands and feet into me. I was responsible for carrying the weight of an innocent man who had the weight of the world on his shoulders. He told me, he said, I wasn't born for it, but I was built for it. He said, he said, but Cray, um, the cross was real talkative. He said, but Cray, 
um, that, that ain't it. I got to tell you, the greatest experience I ever had um, during this agony, I said, well, Mr. Cross, go ahead and give it to me so I can share it with the people. He said, the greatest lesson that I learned, the greatest experience I had, the greatest lesson that I learned from this agony with Jesus, he said, is I learned that hope is not in what you see, but what you know. I, I said, Mr. Cross, I'm bringing that thing home. He said, listen, I saw Jesus' agony. He said, I saw the tears in Jesus' eyes. I saw the blood spilling. I saw the anger and the evilness in the people that were persecuting them. He said, I saw everything that was he was experiencing. I saw the sweat coming down. I saw him gasping for air. And what I saw should have took my hope. Uh, he, he, he said, I saw stuff that some would have never seen. I seen him flogged. I seen the crown of thorns dropped on his head. I seen his blood streaming down. And what I saw should have made me lose hope. But the cross said, the thing that kept me going is not what I saw, but what I know. He said, I know that he was a way maker. I know that he opened the eyes of the blind. I know that he healed the sick. I know that Ezekiel said he was a wheel in the middle of a wheel. I know that he's the lily in the valley the bright and morning star. I know that he can turn things around. He said, what I saw should have made me lose hope, but I stayed hopeful because of what I know. And family, I know, I know, I know that if you look around and open your eyes, you can see that our world is metaphorically upside down. You can see that there are 13 million people that file for unemployment. You can see that chaos is happening. You can see that evil is on the loose. You can see that things may not look good. You can see that our economy is spiraling down where you can see the struggle. You can see all the pain. You can see all the hurt. But we can't get stuck on what we see. Why? Because the Bible says I walk by faith and not by sight. So what I see may make me want to give up, but the reason that I keep on pressing, the reason that you keep on pushing is not based on what you see, but your hope is based on what you know. Uh, I, I, that, that's good to me right there um, because you got to know that he brought you out of it before. And he'll bring you out of it again. You got to know if he showed up the last time, he going to show up again. You got to know if he can promote you the last time, he can promote you again. You got to know if he healed your body before, he can heal your body again. You got to know that even though you couldn't see him, you can trace him. You got to know what you know. And that's what keeps your hope alive. The cross said, the greatest lesson I learned during Jesus' agony is not to get lost in what I see. Because what I saw should have made me give up, but what I know kept me going. <laughs> what, what, what I saw should have made me turn around. What I saw should have made me lose all strength. But what I know is what made me stand back up. What I know is made me keep going forward. What I know is what gave me hope. Conversation with the cross said, uh, Mr. Cross, we, 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 we got to get out of here. Uh, he's real talkative. He said, yeah, he said, I'm going to told you that uh, I, I wasn't born for this. Um, but I was built for it. I told you that my greatest lesson was um, hope is not in what you see, but hope is in what you know. I said, well, tell me one more thing um, because I'm a traditional preacher and we get three points and we out of here. So I said, Mr. Cross, you got to tell me one more thing to make sure this thing fit right and in the timing that it needs to be in. He said, well, let me give you this last thing. He said, the thing that I love the most is I felt his blood on me. Okay, I got, I got, I got to go. Uh, y'all, 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 I can't see y'all, but y'all ain't helping me out there in virtual land, Facebook live. He said, um, the thing that blessed me the most is I felt his blood on me. I felt his blood on me. I felt his blood on me. He said, listen, his blood was on me. When they placed the crown of thorns on his head and the blood came streaming down, it streamed down on me. When they drilled holes through his hands and his feet, the blood from his hands and his feet, it came onto me. They said when they pierced him in the side and water and blood came out, the blood got on me. The cross said, I was there from the very beginning. I was in the garden as a tree of knowledge in the beginning. And when they cut me down after years, I should have dried out and rotted. But, but then um, when, when they made me into a bridge, Mr. Cross says, as a bridge and people traveling over me back and forth, I should have dried out and I should have rotted, but I didn't. He, he says, when, when, when Solomon buried me underground to preserve me, I should have dried out and I should have rotted, but I didn't. He, he says, when, when, when they hung Jesus on me and put nails through me, I should have dried out and I should have rotted, but I didn't. 
He, he said then, 100 years later, after Jesus had died and resurrected, when I was found by Helena, who was the mother of Constant, Constantine, who's the founder of Christianity and was the emperor of Rome, when she found me 100 years later, she should have found me and I should have been rotted and I should have been dried out, but I wasn't. And then he said in 2016, when they found a fragment of me and they took it to Oxford University and they tested it, what they found out is that after all these years, after nearly 6,000 years, I still had life. Yeah, okay. okay. And, and Mr. Cross said, and now I showed up in 2020 just to send a message to y'all that after all those years, I never dried out. I never rotted. After all those years, I never stopped. I never stopped living. Even when they tested me in your university at Oxford, I still had life in me. And now in 2020, Mr. Cross showed up to tell us the only reason. That I lived nearly 6,000 years. The only reason that you can test me and I still got life in me. The only reason that I did not dry out and I did not rot is because his blood was on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I got to go right here, family. Um, but the reality is, can I help somebody real quick? Um, the only reason that you survived as long as you survived is because the blood is on you. The only reason that you overcame the divorce is because the blood is on you. The only reason that you're able to see and feel your heart men back together after you was heartbroken is because the blood is on you. The only reason that you're going to survive is because the blood is on you. And is there anybody in this place right now or that's watching us live that understands that the power of the blood is the blood that gives me strength? strength day after day. Y'all ain't going to help me. That It's the blood that shall never lose its power. And the only reason I'm in my right mind right now is because the blood is on me. The only reason I didn't die and I'm not in prison is because the blood is on me. The only reason I'm not broke when it feels like it is because the blood is on me. Is there anybody that will testify today that the blood is on me? I, I, I got to I gotta go, family, but um, that, that feels real good to me right there. I feel like that cross in this moment because there's some stuff that should have took you out, but the blood was on you. There's an accident that should have killed you, but the blood was on you. There's a thing that you tried unprotectively that should have took you out, but the blood was on you. There's some stuff, mothers, that you should have died on the bed giving birth, but the blood was on you. And you should be able to celebrate God today and celebrate your Savior, not for any other reason except for that the blood was on you. I, I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm done. Um, Mr. Cross told me, he said, I only survived all these years because, watch this, I felt, yeah, I felt his blood on me. So y'all, y'all, y'all just clap and pity patty on whatever you did out there in live virtual world. Um, y'all just did that on the fact that the blood was on you. Um, so we, we got knowledge of the blood being on you. But uh, Brandy Anthony, there's a difference in having knowledge of something being on me and actually feeling. Okay, I, see, 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 grandmama told me that the blood was on me. Yeah. Ah! Grandmama told me that the blood would preserve me. Grandmama told me that the blood would take care of me. But it wasn't until I was 22 years old that I had an experience and I felt the blood for myself. And family, there's some of you in here, some of you watching right now, that you may not understand it in this moment, but it's a difference than when grandmama told you versus when you felt the blood on you. And is there anybody that can literally feel the blood on your life? When I wanted to cuss them out, I felt the blood. When I wanted to chase after her, I felt the blood. When I wanted to smoke, when I wanted to drink, I felt the blood. When I wanted to give up, I felt the blood. When I wanted to quit, I felt the blood. The only reason I'm able to survive is because I felt the blood. The, the, cross, the cross said, didn't nobody have to tell me about the blood. I felt the blood. I'm done. I'm done. Y'all can go ahead and stand. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Listen, family. Here, here's what I find extremely interesting is that uh, when Helena who was Constantine's mama when she a hundred years after Jesus rose and resurrected on Facebook live when Helena goes um, and finds mysteriously these three crosses she 
she, she's confused because she, before Constantine, was a believer in Jesus. And uh, legend has it that when she sees these three crosses, she can't decipher which one belonged to Gestus, Dismas, or Jesus. So she had them take each one of the crosses out. The legend has it that the very first cross she put her hands on. She said, and I quote, I felt lightning bolts through my body. She touched the other two crosses, felt nothing. Don't miss this. There was blood from Dismas on one cross. Had no power. There was blood from Gestus on another cross, but had no power. But the cross that was carved from the wood, from the tree of knowledge and the tree of mercy, and the first cross that she touched, she told him, this the one I got to take because the miracle